cool. Cool, 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 sciencey stuff. And stuff like that in the world of science type things. So we have made some pretty big discoveries lately. Discoveries that seem to indicate that we may be living in a actual multiverse. But did you know that string theory and these multiverse ideas were possibly thought of in the 13th century? Probably not, unless you have just happened to read the same article I had today. Which basically said that this cosmologist way back in 1225 theorized that the universe started with a giant flash of light. And that that light and matter shared similar properties. So the intense light, as it expanded and, and exploded outwards, repelled everything away from a fixed point. Does that sound familiar? Well, it should. The Big Bang Theory basically said more or less the kind of-ish sort of same thing. There was this massive explosion, and it repelled everything away from the centered fixed point, this huge epicenter. Which is really cool! This guy came up with this way back before anybody else did. That's really awesome. He was doing what he could do back in the Dark Ages. They didn't even take baths in the back in the Dark Ages. He did this without being able to take a bath. His theories uh, have some pretty big holes in them, and science has, you know, basically figured out that some of his things were pretty much silly, but that's really cool. Anyways, um, I thought this would be cool to, to share with everybody out there on YouTube. It's really neat, you know, pers changing perspective on things. Way back then, they had some pretty good ideas, despite the fact that they didn't take baths. No baths. Okay, so, way back in the day, when I was a little bit younger and in better shape, I would run a lot. I loved to run. I loved to run with friends, I loved the runner's high, I loved just to run. I was kind of my, my sport sort of thing, was, was running. Well, I read this article talking about running hard and staying ahead of the pack, which I thought, hey, let me all learn something about running, or whatever. Well, I was wrong. It just basically reinforced what I already knew as a runner. Which was, if you want to run harder, faster, and longer, you don't need to push yourself extra hard every single time you do it. What you need to do is push yourself about 25-30% to 30 of the time, and then work at a lower but constant rate the rest of the time. Basically, burn up twice a week really hard, and then go at a pretty steady pace three times a week, more or less. Burning up your body builds up strength. Everybody knows that. But if you burn too hard every day, you tear yourself down too much. You o your overall workout will be less effective because your body can't keep up with the demands you are putting on it. If you slow down, however, and maintain an easy pace part of the week, your workout then allows your body to rebuild, but still maintains the, the work you've already put into it. I used to do this all the time with my friends. Uh, we would run on the beach in San Diego, California, and use this technique, and would really burn hard about, you know, a couple times a week, and then the rest of the time we'd just go for a long, steady run, where we didn't really sprint or do any of the knee highs, which is basically running in the water, hitting your knees, you can't really see that, knees, like, as high as you can, because, you, you know, you have to keep them high to be able to get over the waves. It, it, it really did make my, my runs just longer, stronger, and faster in general, and, and it really was an awesome workout. If you guys are into activities, working out, or just being out in nature, doing all kinds of things, it might not be a bad idea to try this technique. Uh, it really made a difference in my workout, so yeah, give it a shot. Wherever we may stand, today as an industry, I am confident that we will stand somewhere far better tomorrow, as long as you, right here, are willing to be an agent of change. I sincerely hope that you are ready for that change, because I sure as hell am. Now, who do you guys believe might have said that? Hmm, I wonder... This one came from a video game conference. That's right, video games. You may have been seeing some, some news uh, lately about stereotypes in video games. Some studies have 
some strong links between between the race of the avatar and the racial stereotypes and racist language used by the people playing the game after the game has been played. Well, Menvir Hare, probably butchering that name just to let you know. Uh, he basically wants change. He want he came forward and called a, for a massive change in the industry as a whole. He wants the um, video the effects video games have on people positive to be positive. He doesn't want the world to hate gaming or to censor games, but he does want minorities, women, and to be represented differently in games. He wants the our culture to shift its perspective on these avatars, on these games, on everything basically, and he wants to use gaming as a possible platform to launch these perspectives. Um, now, I'm with you guys. I don't want our games to get PC for PC's sake. However, it's good to step out of the box. Let's make things a little smarter, right? Why not? It, it will not only press different perspectives into our, our collective consciousness, it will make for better storytelling. Good writing, good games, good music, good fiction, good non-fiction needs to step outside of the box to grow. No one is condemning gaming. No one is condemning anyone. No one is saying you're evil to be looking at um, these games or to be working with these games. People just want to make things better. And that's the perspective I want to leave on today. Let's just make things better. Hehehehe. <laughs>